gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a homicide detail. A call comes into the office. A woman says her husband is dead. She thinks he's been murdered. Your job, investigate. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Wednesday, July 8th. It was sunny in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out a homicide detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Lorman. My name's Friday. It was 11.03 a.m. when we got to 906 South Norwood Street. Front door. Hi, Friday and Smith. Homicide. How are you? Carly, 1F14. Hi, Carly. Mrs. Pilsen, the victim's wife, is back in the bedroom. Pretty broken up about it. Uh-huh. What about the victim? Name's George Pilsen, age 57. No children. Just he and his wife live here. That's about all I got. She cried so much, I thought it might be better to let her rest until you got here. That's a good idea. Where's the body? In the other bedroom. I'll show you. All right. Because she felt so bad, I thought maybe she'd like me to call her doctor. She said she didn't want any. Uh-huh. Mrs. Pilsen's right across the hall. Right. That's a head wound. Yeah. Looks like somebody was serious. Yeah. Now we're going to need the lab and latent prints. You want me to call him? Yeah. Better call a coroner, too, will you, please? Right. Thank you. Well, he's lying here. Position of his hands outside the covers. Doesn't look like there was much of a struggle, does it? No. Oh, could have been asleep when he got it, huh? Mm-hmm. Better talk to his wife, huh? Yeah. Miss Pilsen. Miss Pilsen, police officers. Police officers, we'd like to talk to you. Sorry to disturb you, ma'am. We'd appreciate it if you tell us what you know about all this. All right. You want to go in the front room? All right, that'll be fine. You go ahead, please. I couldn't talk to the other policemen. We understand. Calls are all in, Sergeant. Anything else I can do? No, thanks, Carly. We'll handle it now. Right, I'll shove off. Miss Pilson, this is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Uh Uh-huh. How are you, ma'am? like so many other mornings. Except nobody sat in his chair like you are, Mr. Friday. I used to sit here and it was quiet. I didn't want to disturb George's sleep. Well, then your husband usually slept during the morning hours, is yes. that right? He worked nights at the Belden Aircraft Company. All right. Would you tell us what happened? What is it to tell? He came from shopping and found him just like he is now. Do you remember what time it was? I don't know for sure. 10.30. Somewhere around there. When did you leave the house? About the same time I usually do. I couldn't do my housework in the morning. Didn't want to disturb George. Mm-hmm. About when would that be? About nine o'clock. Was your husband asleep when you left? Yes. He never closed the door, and I looked in before I left. And when you left the house this morning, did you lock the house? The back door was locked. Never locked the front, but I'm just going to be gone for a short while. I see. It doesn't take me more than two hours to shop at the most. Do you know if your husband had any enemies, Miss Pilsen? Oh, not that I know of. He might have, but he never said anything to me about them. Mm-hmm. Hope you won't take offense, but we have to ask this. How did you and your husband get along? I guess I should have known that I'd be suspect, too. Well, we have to ask it. No, I know, Mr. Friday. You men are strangers. How could you know what our marriage was like? And how do you... Sum up 30 years in one or two sentences. Good, bad, and happy, unhappy. It was all those. Mm -hmm. I don't think our life is much different than most couples. Maybe one exception. You see over there on the table? Yes, ma'am. My collection of elephants. I started collecting them as a little girl. I always thought that one day I'd have a little girl. I'd give them to her. We never had any children. Mm-hmm. So my children have been pretend. I've kept adding to the collection all these years. Each new elephant is one that my little girl or perhaps a little boy would have added. I see that. 
I was wrong before about something I said. Hold on. I said you were strangers. Yeah. You're not, really. Otherwise, I wouldn't have told you about the elephants. Yes, ma'am. Then you and your husband haven't had any quarrels recently. Usual words. Nothing serious, though. Now, there's something else we'll have to know. Yes. Do you know if any personal property is missing? Stolen, you mean? That's right. Well, I'd have to look first. What if you do that for us? Right now? Yes, ma'am. If you feel up to it, we'd appreciate it if you could. You want to know about the bedroom, too? Yes, ma'am. All right. One other thing, Miss Pilsen. Yes. Was your husband in the habit of carrying large sums of money on his person, would you know? Oh, no. Usually carried some cash, but never large amounts. I see. All right. Would you like to start checking now, Miss Pilsen? Do you mind if we sit a moment longer? No, it's all right. Take your time. I was just remembering how like other days this is. I'd sit here reading and maybe just looking at my elephants and thinking. Mm Mm-hmm. It would be real quiet. Then the clock would strike 12. I'd go in with George. Yes, ma'am. Shall we go in? Yes, if you're ready. It's not quite time. That won't make any difference now. Beg your pardon? He won't hear us. When we checked the bedroom, Miss Pilson told us her husband's watch and diamond ring were missing. She said as far as she could determine, nothing else had been taken from the house. In the meantime, crews from the crime lab and Leighton Prince arrived. Frank called the office, and they ran the names George and Marie Pilson through r and They called back later to say they could find no record on either one of them. Further questioning of the victim's wife failed to give us any definite lead as to who our suspect might be. We left the home and began to question some of the neighbors. 1.14 p.m., we rang the bell at the house directly across the street. We identified ourselves, and Sam Mordell, the occupant, admitted it. We went into the front room. I was beginning to think I'd have to go look you fellas up. How do you mean that, sir? Well, I saw all the cars and activity over at the Pilsons. I couldn't figure out what it was. I thought it must be trouble of some kind. Well, curiosity just about got the best of me. Uh-huh. Uh, grab a chair. Might as well be comfortable while you're here. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Miss Mordell. Uh, don't mind all the wood shavings on the floor. You see, I'm a wood carver. It's not my job. It's just a hobby. I'm, I'm retired. I'm a railroad man. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I had a rug in here, but uh, I took it out. I always like those eating places with the sawdust on the floor. You, you know the kind. Of course, shavings aren't sawdust, but then it's easier to save them this way, too. Yes, sir. I wonder if you'd answer a few questions for us. Sure thing. Anyhow, if I keep on gabbing, I won't find out what this is all about. You go ahead and ask your questions. Thank you. Do you usually sit in that chair when you work? Sure do. Seldom miss a day. I call this my cab window. What's that, sir? Cab window. I used to be an engineer, sort of got used to looking out and enjoying the scenery as it went by. Oh. Of course, now the view doesn't change much, but I, I still like to see what's going on in the neighborhood. Yes. Were you sitting here this morning, sir? Yeah. Don't miss many days. I haven't the time. I have to get this chain finished. A lot of work to carve the wood chain. Yes, sir. Would you remember seeing anybody around the Pilsen residence this morning? You mean besides Mrs. Pilsen? You saw her, did you? Sure. When she went shopping. It always goes Wednesday morning, of course, unless the weather is bad. Yes, sir. Did you see anybody else? Yes. Saw a fellow come out of there while Mrs. Pilson was at the store. Saw a man come out of the house? Yeah. Would you remember what time that was? Ten o'clock sharp. You sure of that? That's right. You see this watch? Yes, sir. They gave me this when I retired. You can see what it says on the back. See? See? Look. Hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's real nice. Railroad watch. Doesn't vary a bit. I don't get a newspaper, so I listen to the radio news when I'm working. Mm-hmm. Always check the time they come on. Because I know that my watch is right. Sometimes they're a couple of seconds late or early. Most of those, pretty much on schedule, make good railroad men. Yes, sir. It was 10 o'clock sharp by my watch. Program was three seconds late. Yes, sir. Now, did you see that man go in? No. I went out to make a pot of coffee. How long were you out of the room? 20 minutes. Never take any more than 20 minutes. Do you mind if I carve while we talk? I've got to get this chain finished. They're going to get a new record. Yes, sir. All right. Could you describe this man for us? Sure. But I can give you a better clue than that. What's that, Mr. Mardell? He had a truck. Go ahead, Mike. Printing on the side. Uh-huh. Man's name. Said he's shopping lawnmowers. Do you know the name? 
Well, I'm not real sure. Either Ray or Gray. Was there an address? Yeah, it was a letter too small. Anyhow, I wasn't too interested. I, I sharpened my own mower. Uh -huh. Can you tell us what kind of a truck it was? Mm, not the make, but it was a closed-in kind. Green color. Didn't look too new. Uh -huh. And you say the name on the side was either Ray or Gray, is that it? Yeah, my eyes are good yet, but uh, only the ray part was real clear. It looked like there could have been another letter in the front, though. Uh-huh. Just thought of something. Yes, sir. It didn't have to be gray. It could have been Bray or Trey. Yes, sir. We can check that out. Now, can I ask you something? What's that, sir? What's the trouble? Well, Mr. Pilson's dead. Huh. Well, couldn't have been a natural death or you fellows wouldn't be asking questions. That's too bad. George is a pretty good neighbor. Is that right, sir? Be tough on his wife, too, being married so long and all. I went to their 25th anniversary. <laughs> Isn't easy to go on alone. I lost my wife seven years ago. Mm -hmm. Not when you've been happy. It's not easy. Yes, sir. Mr. Mordell, you said you could give us a description of the man you saw coming out of Pilsen. Yeah, and if he had anything to do with George's death, he's going to get what I wanted for so long. What's that, sir? That's when you catch him, I mean. Yeah. He'll get his name in the paper. <clears throat> How's that again, sir? That's why I'm carving this chain. It's going to be the longest chain ever carved out of a single piece of wood. Oh, I see. Almost made it a couple other times. Then I got too anxious and botched the whole thing. See there? Shavings? Yes, sir. When I finish, I'm going to sweep them all up and weigh them. You know, give the reporters something to write about. Well, sir, I hope this one turns out for you. Thanks. I'll make it this time. Maybe it won't be on the front page, but my name will be in the paper, too. Hmm. We need to be sure of one thing. Yeah? You picked a little better way to get there. Sam Wardell gave us a description of the man that he'd seen. We called the office and got out a local broadcast, and then we went back to the Pilsen house. We found a lawnmower in the backyard. Mrs. Pilsen said her husband had sent the lawnmower out to be sharpened, but she didn't know who the man was that did the work. We checked the classified directory and we found the name Gray's Lawnmower Service. The listing had been underlined in pencil. Frank and I drove to the address, 2604 Royal Street. It was a small shop set well back from the street. The place was locked. A clock sign on the door read, We'll be back at, and the hand pointed to 4.30. We parked across the street and we waited. At 4.43 p.m., a man answering the description we'd been given unlocked the door and entered the shop. 4.45 p.m. Oh, hiya. Either this is perfect timing or you've been waiting for me. We're police officers. Uh-huh. Well, I guess that writes off the timing part. Is your name Gray? No, it's Para. Do you work for a man named Gray? Uh-uh. It's my own business. I bought it from him. I see. He'd been here for some 20 years, so I just kept the name. Do you pick up and deliver in your business? Yeah. Well, then you have a truck. That's right. What kind? Panel job, a Dodge. What color? Green. Look, I don't mind answering questions. I know you got a job to do, but the way I see it, this question and answer game plays better if we both know what counts and what doesn't. How about it? Well, for the time being, let's just say you called it, huh? Yeah? We got a job to do. That's it. It'll have to be for now. All right, I don't want to buck you guys. I got nothing to hide, but I get the same feeling when somebody won't cash a check for me. Yeah. It galls me to think I'm lined up as a bad risk. We're not accusing you of anything. Now, we'd appreciate your cooperation, but trying to keep this in mind. We'll still get what we came here for. Now, you make the choice how you want it. Okay, what are you after, hot lawnmowers? You said you made deliveries, is that right? Yeah. Do you keep a record of the calls you make? Sure. Can we see the record? Yeah, if you want, the book's over at the desk in the drawer. I'll get it. I'll get it. What'd you expect? I was going to pull a gun out of the drawer? That's the one? Yeah. Here you are, Joe. Thanks. These all the calls for today? That's right. Austin, Kemper. When'd you make these calls? What time? That's right. Well, Kemper this morning, Austin this afternoon. They're the only ones you made today, huh? Yeah. Wait a minute. Let me see the book a second. All right. Uh, it isn't here. I guess I forgot to enter it. What's that? Another call I made. What was that? On uh, Norwood Street, uh, 906, I think it was. Remember the name? Uh, Pilsen. What time were you there? I'm not sure. 9.30 or so, I guess. Who'd you talk to? Nobody. Didn't see anyone around. Did you go in the house? Why? Did you? 
Yeah, I rang the bell a couple of times, and I knocked. Yeah. Well, I thought maybe they were in the back of the house and couldn't hear me. The door was open a little, so I walked in. Yeah. Went in the front room, called out, didn't get any answer, so I left. You didn't leave the front room? That's right. Did you see anybody? I told you I didn't. What more do you want? You said you called out. Yeah? How loud? What do you mean? Loud enough to wake a person sleeping in a back bedroom, maybe? Well, I guess so. No one answered or came out. I know that. All right. Well, was there someone there when I called? That's right. Well, I asked them then. I don't know what you're getting at. I walked into a house. I didn't do anything wrong there. If there was someone there, ask them. It'd be a little hard to do. Huh? He's dead. We took Para back to the office and questioned him further. He continued to maintain his innocence. We ran his name through R&I and found a package for him showing one arrest for suspicion of ADW as a juvenile. We booked him on suspicion of 187 PC, murder, and Frank and I went back to his shop. We thoroughly searched both the building and his truck, but we failed to turn up either the ring or the watch. Thursday morning, Leighton Prince reported that they'd found no fingerprints in the house other than those of the victim and his wife. We got a call from Ray Pinker in the crime lab. He said that George Pilson had been beaten about the head with some type of round instrument. He also substantiated our theory that there had been a little struggle on the part of the victim. We called the county morgue and Dr. Seppel, who said he'd notify us as soon as he posted the body. 11.26 a.m. Joe? Mm-hmm. So just checking over these time elements. Yeah. And Mrs. Pilson left at 9. It's gone about an hour and a half. And the neighbors saw Para leave the house at 10, right? Yep. Yeah. And if Mordell is right about how long he was gone from his front window, Para could have been there about 20 minutes. That's the way it checks out. Well, give him enough time, don't you think? Well, we've still got to figure maybe he's telling us the truth. Yeah. And if he is, that gives us several possibilities. When Pilson didn't answer, maybe it's because he couldn't. No, yeah, see what you mean. I got it. Homicide, Friday. Yeah. It was, uh, Yeah. I see. Right. Be right over. It's Doc Cephalo. Just finished posting the body. Yeah. It's possible that Pilsen wasn't killed by the head blows. What do you mean? Might have been dead before he was hit. Dr. Cephalou said he'd found evidence of a barbiturate in the victim's body in a quantity large enough to kill him. He also pointed out that the lack of profuse bleeding from the head wounds led him to believe that the victim was dead before the beating occurred. Frank and I drove out to the Pilsen residence. We talked to the victim's wife. We explained to her that it was necessary that we know more about her husband's physical condition prior to his death. We went into the front room and sat down. Try to answer your questions, but today I'm just beginning to realize what it's going to be like being alone. Yes, ma'am, we can understand that. We'll try to be as brief as possible. Thank you. Now, had your husband been under a doctor's care recently? No. Had he been in good mental spirits? Yes. He didn't seem unusually worried about anything? Not that I know of. Well, now, would you tell us about yourself, Miss Pilsen? Uh, well, what do you mean? Well, have you been under a doctor's care recently? No. What has all this to do with my husband's death? Well, we'd like to know if there would be any reason for you or your husband to have a prescription for a strong barbiturate in the house. A what? A sedative, ma'am. You mean to make you sleep? That's right. No. We did never use them. Then you haven't had any in the house recently. Well, I haven't. I don't think George did. Would it be possible that your husband could have used a barbiturate and you didn't know about it? Yes. But if he did, I'm sure he'd have told me. We didn't have secrets from each other. I see. I'll get it. Marie, you poor thing. I just got back and heard the terrible news that came right over. Well, thank you, Lydia. But could you come back later? Well, sure, dear. Is there anything I can do for you? Maybe, but I can't talk now. All right, Marie. Are the police here? Yes. But well, won't you come back later? Have you told them? Yes. You told them what George tried to do? Yes. Excuse me, ma'am. Couldn't help overhearing your conversation. Yet. Oh, you're the policeman? That's right. Yes, ma'am. I'm Marie's neighbor. Yes, we understand. What did you mean about Mr. Pilson trying to do something? Well, she didn't mean anything. She was just talking. Now, look, let's let her tell it, shall we? Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. What did you mean, ma'am? Maybe it's not important. Why don't you tell us anyway? George tried to kill Marie. We brought the neighbor, Lydia Shires, into the house for further questioning. She explained that she was a close friend of Marie Pilson's. It was quite evident that Mrs. Pilson didn't want her friend to talk to us. If I had any idea I was going to cause all this trouble, I'd never come over. I only meant to help Marie. Would you tell us why you said that Mr. Pilson was trying to kill his wife? Sure, but Marie can tell you better than I can. <laughs> oh, now, honey, don't get upset. It's, it's going to work out all right. 
Well, I'll tell you what I know, but Marie will have to fill in the details. All right, go ahead, please. Her last week it was, she came over to my house terribly worried. She was afraid she was going to have another nervous breakdown. Oh, please don't, let him, please don't. Now, don't fret, dear. We all want to help you. Miss Tilson, once more, had you been under a doctor's care recently? It was George, her husband, that made her sick. Kept telling her she was going crazy, said she was going to die. Finally, she got to believe in the things he was saying. Yeah. That's when she had the breakdown. How long ago was this? About three weeks ago. All right, go ahead, will you? Well, George got these pills for her, something for her nerves to make her rest. Yeah. That may be our office, I'll get it. All right. Hello. That's right. No, he isn't. You want to tell me who's calling? Would you like to leave a message? All right. No, my name's Smith. I... She hung up. A woman asking for Mr. Pilsen. Did she give her name? No, said she was a friend of the family. It was her. I know it. I wish I'd talked to her. Who was it, Miss Tilson? I don't know her name, but she lied. She's no friend of mine. She caused all this. How do you mean? That's why George was trying to kill me. With me out of the way, he could have her. She'd come and live in my home. Oh, you never told me about her. I still had some pride. All right, now this medicine your husband got, was it a barbiturate? Yes. That's how he was going to kill me. Where did he get the pills? I don't know. George would come in and sit on my bed in the early morning. When he'd come in from work... He'd wake me up. Tell me I was going to lose my mind. Yeah. Time after time he did it. I began to think he was right. I couldn't remember doing things. That's when he started taking these pills, huh? Yes, that's right. I see. He'd put them in my food or in my drink. You sure he did that? Yes. I counted the capsules in the bottle every time I took one. Got so I couldn't remember if I'd taken them or not, so I counted them. Mm-hmm. I wrote the number down on paper so I'd be sure. Some were always missing. I knew he'd been giving them to me. All right, go ahead. That's when I told Lydia about it. She said to stop. Is that right, Miss Sharon? Yeah, I told her not to take any more. Did you stop taking the sedative? Yes. I told George about what Lydia said. He got mad and said I shouldn't have gone to her. Then he started telling me I'd go crazy if I didn't take them. He kept after me. Is that why you killed him, Miss Tilson? Can't mean Marie did it. He kept after me. I knew he was trying to get rid of me. He'd stay out all night when he wasn't working. Did he tell you about the other woman? No, he didn't have to. I knew. A couple of times she called here. I answered the phone. When she heard my voice, she hung up. Mm -hmm. So you gave him the pills you'd been taking, is that it? To make him sleep. I always had a sandwich when he came home from work. I fixed it before I went to bed. When did you strike him? When I came home from the market, I suppose. You'll want the weapon, won't you? Yeah, I'm going to watch the ring, too. All right. Marie, how could you do it? It had to be. He was going to kill me. She was going to come live at my home with my children. Lydia. Yeah? I want you to take my family. What? My elephants. I want you to have them. All right, Marie. Do you want to tell us where the weapon is, Miss Belson? All right. I didn't believe George. That he was telling the truth. Yeah. He told me this would happen. What's that? He said I was crazy. The story you've just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On November 3rd, trial was held in Department 97, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. <laughs> Ellen Pilson was examined by three psychiatrists appointed by the state and found to be insane. She was confined to Mendocino State Hospital for the criminally insane for treatment. You have just heard Dragnet, the authentic story of your police force in action, and starring Jack Webb, a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. <laughs> 